Court is now in session. You may be seated. Thank you, Ms. Draper. The court will uh, issue a written sentencing memorandum after sentencing. I first want to uh, say that I appreciate and understand the reasons behind the Commonwealth's recommendation and the defendant's recommendation and have taken both seriously into account. When something terrible happens, people will often say it could always be worse. It is difficult for this, to, this court to imagine what could be worse for an individual or a family to endure than the brutal and senseless murder of Colleen Ritzer. Colleen Ritzer lived a life of quiet heroism. That's what most teachers do. Henry Adams observed that a teacher affects eternity. She can never tell where her influence starts. Colleen Ritzer's parents, more than most, have learned the reach of their daughter's influence, but at a cost no parent should have to endure. Colleen Ritzer loved her job, her family, friends, students, and co-workers. The depth of that love was manifest today. She was loved and valued by her family, friends, students, and so many people whose lives she touched. To paraphrase from the book of Proverbs, who can find a woman of valor? Her value is far beyond pearls. The defendant, Philip Chisholm, did not start life on third base. The court points this out not by way of excuse, or even explanation, but because it is true. Sometimes his father was living in the family home, sometimes he wasn't. Although the defendant's father was not present during the trial, his presence was still palpable. He was abusive, harsh, unfaithful, and unpredictable. The defendant's mother worked hard to provide for her family, emotionally and financially, with mixed success. After living in Tennessee and a brief stint in Florida with his father, the defendant moved to Danvers, Massachusetts with his mother and sisters in the late spring of 2013. He started as a freshman at Danvers High School that fall. While the extent or lack of extent of the defendant's mental health was the subject of exhaustive testimony at trial. The Commonwealth presented overwhelming evidence that the defendant had substantial capacity to appreciate the wrongfulness of his conduct and had the substantial capacity to conform his con conduct to the requirements of the law. The defendant was quiet, polite, athletic, and had no prior criminal record. Then, on October 22, 2013, he carefully and deliberately prepared to kill his math teacher. The school day ended at 1.55 p.m., but Colleen Ritzer, like thousands of other conscientious teachers, was not done with her work day. As was her practice, she stayed after school to make herself available for students who needed academic help, or just as student Autumn Cianci did that day to spend time in her classroom seeking calmness in the midst of adolescence. Colleen Ritz's practice was to arrive home late in the afternoon, chat with her mother, and then get to work planning for the next day's classes. Colleen Ritz's mother testified so poignantly about how her daughter would come home and walk into her mom's home office and ask about her day, anxious for her turn to tell her mother about her own wonderful day, preparing children for the world. There would be no mother-daughter chat that Tuesday afternoon. While Colleen's mother waited for her loving daughter, the defendant violently raped Colleen Ritzer. He viciously, brutally, and senselessly attacked Colleen in the girls' bathroom, just feet from the classroom, where she was in her second year of living her dream of being a teacher. When the defendant was finished in the bathroom, he put Colleen Ritzer inside a recycle bin, wheeled her to the woods, and pulled up her shirt, exposing her breasts. Thereafter, he spread her legs and inserted a large tree branch inside her. Colleen Ritzer was found dead hours later, after a frantic search by law enforcement. The jury found, to a moral certainty, that the defendant killed Colleen Ritzer 
and that he was criminally responsible for her murder. The court will impose a sentence in this case without emotion, passion, sympathy, or pity. But one cannot see and hear what this court has during the course of this case without feeling that the crashing waves of this tragedy will never wane. There is no, quote, right, end quote, sentence. No amount of prison time would ever be enough to be commensurate with this crime, and no math will ever erase the reality that this crime was committed by a 14-year-old boy. While this court is constitutionally required to consider that, there is always the possibility of redemption. Even if the defendant were to live a perfect life from this moment on, his repeated stab wounds to Colleen Ritz's young body will remain indelible with Colleen Ritz's family, friends, and community until the last person who knew Colleen Ritzel takes his or her last breath. Our Massachusetts Declaration of Rights in the United States Constitution require this court to consider the defendant's age, the possibility of rehabilitation, and the brain development of adolescence when imposing a sentence. This court also takes into consideration the nature and circumstances of the crime, public safety, general deterrence, the crime's impact on Colleen Ritzer and her family, and the risk of recidivism. I will punish the defendant for the murder of Colleen Ritzer, and I will punish him for the rape, as well as the armed robbery of the underpants she put on on the morning of her death. But I may not utilize the horrific rape and robbery of Colleen Ritzer to punish the defendant for this unspeakable murder more than the law allows. Sentencing a human being to prison comes with a solemn obligation to craft a sentence no more or less than justice requires. This inexact process is central to the maintenance of our social compact and part of the core of the concept of ordered liberty. This court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. This court will impose a concurrent sentence of 40 years to 40 years and one day for the rape of Colleen Ritzer and a concurrent sentence of 40 years to 40 years and one day for the armed robbery. In imposing a sentence for the rape at a date in excess of the parole eligibility date for the murder, the court is not suggesting that the rape as heinous as it was, was more egregious than a murder. Rather, this court is constitutionally obligated to set a parole date no more than 25 years for her murder. While Colleen Ritz's rape and murder were inextricably intertwined, this court may not punish the defendant with more prison time for the rape than justice demands for the purposes of avoiding constitutional limitations imposed by our Massachusetts Declaration of Rights as interpreted by a Supreme Judicial Court for the murder committed by a juvenile. Sentence may be imposed. Philip Chisholm, on indictment number 2013-1446, 001. The jury, having returned a verdict of guilty of murder in the first degree on deliberate premeditation and extreme atrocity and cruelty, you will hearken to the sentence the court has awarded against you. The court, having duly considered your offenses, it is hereby ordered that you be committed to the Department of Youth Services until the age of 21 and furthermore committed to the Massachusetts Correctional Institution at Cedar Junction for the period of not less than 25 years and not more than life, and that you stand committed in execution of this sentence. On indictment 2013-1447-002, the jury, having returned a verdict of guilty as a youthful offender of armed robbery, you will hearken to the sentence the court has awarded against you. 
the court having duly considered your offenses. It is hereby ordered that you be committed to the Department of Youth Services until the age of 21, and furthermore committed to the Massachusetts Correctional Institution at Cedar Junction for the period of not less than 40 years and not more than 40 years and one day, and that this sentence is to run concurrent with the sentence imposed on indictment number 2013-1446-001. On indictment number 2014-109, the jury, having returned a verdict of guilty as a youthful offender on the charge of aggravated rape, you will hearken to the sentence the court has awarded against you. The court, having duly considered your offenses, it is hereby ordered that you be committed to the Department of Youth Services until the age of 21, and furthermore committed to the Massachusetts Correctional Institution at Cedar Junction, for the period of not less than 40 years and not more than 40 years and one day, and that this sentence is to be concurrent with the sentence imposed on indictment number 2013-1446 and 2013-1447-002, and that you stand committed in execution of this sentence. The minimus shall reflect 857 days credit towards the sentences imposed this day. There is also a $90 victim witness fee assessed to you this day. I must also inform you, sir, you have the right to appeal to the appellate division of the Superior Court. If you wish to do so, you must do so in 10 days and in writing. Sir, you stand committed. Custody, Mr. Officer. All rise. Court is in recess.